Well, we are in the Premier League with Huddersfield Town. We've got a summer transfer window to review. Can we be Barnsley? Can we be Birmingham? Let's go and find out. Before we start, get yourself liking this video. I'm really, really pleased with what we've been able to do with this summer transfer window. And even if we can't quite match the Barnsley achievement or the Birmingham achievement, I think we've made some very, very good signings. First off, though, we will start with the outs. We actually brought in £56 million from players already in the squad. Mick Quirk was the first one to leave. The centre-back, young English, he was there from the start. I actually played him quite a lot in our first championship season. But Brentford came in and made an inquiry. I said £20 million. They said 12 I said 18 They accepted. <laughs> so we managed to bring in £18 million for him now. I wouldn't have minded them staying in our squad, you know, just to be an English player, basically, because I don't really have too many of them. But 18 million, I absolutely bit their hand off. Next up to leave was Eight Benassar, a very, very good player. He'd done excellent stuff for us in the championship. But at 30 years old, I had other targets in mind. I had to bring in some money from somewhere. So he was the man who ended up leaving the club. We ended up bringing in around £15.75 million initially, which could rise to £19.5 million, depending on various clauses and things. The next one to leave was Gaston Fontani, left to join Middlesbrough for £10 million. We signed him last season for £5 million. He made 27 appearances, a lot of them coming off the bench, and we've got better players. So I decided to sell him, decided to cash in now whilst we could. He's still a very good player. He's still got plenty of potential to grow. No doubt he will have a very good season at Middlesbrough in the Championship. He just wasn't for me. Harry Wing also left the club. Another English lad who was at us at the very start with some good potential. He's went and joined Young Boys for £8 million. I think that's a good bit of business for this lad. He's definitely a good Championship player, I would say. And somebody I wouldn't mind having at the next club I'm at. But... 8 million is too good to turn down. Jose Coronado was a sacrifice I had to make in terms of the foreign limit that we had in our squad and we we quickly reached that. 2.8 million pounds, joined Middlesbrough again. Uh, another one who will no doubt do very well in the championship. 20 determination like, he's got a driven personality, his physicals are great. Technically he's okay as well. I, I think he'll probably do quite well. Joel Pereira as well, I was starting goalkeeper for the first season. Found himself out of favour after having a four-month injury break in his leg. He's went and joined Tondela for £1 million. Zunder left to leave a free. We've never even seen him. Killian Adam, you'll see who we signed this season's went out on loan. And Marcus Parry, the goalkeeper we signed in January of last year, has also went out on loan to Sheffield Wednesday for the season. They are sitting in League One. I decided to loan him to Sheffield Wednesday. They've got decent enough training facilities. Um, and hopefully he'll get plenty of game time under Ian Holloway. So that brings us to the £76 million outlier that we have done this season. The first one is Andrew Anderson. We've signed him on loan, just paying his wages to Manchester United. A very good English uh, striker by trade, but he will be occupying more of the backup attacking midfielder role in our squad. But he, of course, he can play in the centre midfield. He can play in the attack midfield. He can play as a striker. He can also play on the left-hand side if we are really desperate. So a very good covering option on loan. Next up was Ian Calvert on loan from Everton, a left-sided player. I think I mentioned this lad when we were in charge of Birmingham to keep an eye on it or out on him. He hasn't really, his league, his career hasn't took off at Everton whatsoever. So we've brought him in and he's going to be playing back up for us as well. <laughs> so he's not going to get the game time for us either. He can play up front if we're desperate, uh, but the left-hand side is where he'll mainly play his trade. And he, he'll be fighting for a first-team spot, he will. Damien Maillard, of course, was the sign and we had already agreed uh, to come in on a free. He will be our starting striker. I'm expecting big things from this lad. Hopefully he can rapidly improve over the course of the season and get the goals that we need. Can he match Kaichi Goto? We'll have to wait and see. James Falls we brought in from Manchester United for £375,000. He's currently in the first team squad, but he is listed for loan. He's a very, very talented striker and he's definitely one of the ones I'm going to be keeping an eye on next season, whichever new club I'm at. Uh, with the hope of maybe signing this lad permanently. But he's at Huddersfield for now. I'll try and get him a long game time out in the Championship. Um, but there's nobody really interested because he is just a fresh new signer. Now we'll start with some of the first team players. And Vojkan Stankovic was signed from Slo Slovan Bratislava for £1 million. He's going to be our starting right back. Now right back is probably the weakest part of our squad now. 
especially with this guy being our starter. But he does have the potential. He was available for a million pounds. The right back situation in terms of who was interested in signing for me wasn't very good, um, which is why we've ended up signing this lad. But I think he's going to be great. Physically, he's well-rounded. Mentally, he's well-rounded. Technically, he's already well-rounded. He's probably more of a championship right back right now. Um, he's only on £2,200 a week, expecting to be a fringe player. But I am chucking him straight in and hopefully he will rapidly improve. He's listed as our hottest prospect um, on the club info page. So I'm hoping that means something. Dustin Montag was signed from FC Bayern for £2 million. A three-star, four-star player. Loads of covering options in the defence and in the midfield. He will be our backup defensive midfielder. He could find himself getting some a lot of game time this lad, just purely down to the amount of positions he can play. But um, defensive midfield is where you'll see him most. A good player at 20 years old. Killian Adam was a fee we already agreed last summer, and he's only just joining the club now as he's only turned 18. He's went straight out on loan, a left-sided player, um, someone who, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have bothered with. Next up was the first of two centre-back signings for the season. He will be a starter, Jose Mercado from Boa Vista, for £3.6 million. Now, is he elite? Absolutely not. He's not elite. But he's got potential. Three-star current, four-and-a-half-star. And I'm hoping that he will rapidly improve over the course of the season, as I keep saying <laughs> quite a lot. Mentally is where he's most impressive. These mentals here, only a couple of stages away from becoming 16s and looking suddenly looking a lot, lot better. Physically, he's well-rounded. Technically, he's got it in the right places. And... He's going to be a starter. Peter Vrabek was next. Victoria plays in for £4.8 million. Pounds. We signed him to be a backup right winger. Um, him and Terence will fight for that right-sided spot. I think he's good. 21 years old. Three-star current, four-star potential. He's got the physicals. He's got the technicals as well. And he gives us a little bit of a different option on that right-hand side. We usually play an inverted winger. His natural is as a winger. So um, he gives us option off the bench and... I'm happy with that purchase. Now we we'll start to get into some of the bigger transfer fees. Andres Pitra was signed from Atlanta United for £7 million. He is going to be our starting central midfielder in more of a box-to-box -box midfielder role. Teamwork and work rate was something I was highly looking for in a central midfielder. He's got well-rounded physically, mentally and technically. I was just looking at for a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of player. And I think we've signed him. He's listed as a wonder kid. Um, he can play deep if we need him to. And I like him. I think he's going to be good. Now this might be one of the most major signings of the summer. Adamir. We signed him from Brazil. £10 million. He's a goalkeeper. And he reminds me of Jakob that was signed at Birmingham. You know, I think he looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm hoping that with him between the sticks, we are going to be a much better club for it. Obviously, we've got... Gunnarsson who we signed January last year and I would have been happy starting him in the Premier League but once I saw this man available for 10 million it was just a no-brainer of course we've got to sign him. John Heffernan Holland is probably my most um and an R in signing I'm not sure about this lad 12 and a half million pounds one of the major major reasons why I signed him was because he's English <laughs> honestly that is one of the major signs I really struggled for a left-sided player I agreed a deal with Mezayin. We'll have a look at him shortly. The left winger who we had last season to sign on a permanent basis. And he decided to join Mönchengladbach instead. So I was highly disappointed with that. But um, him coming in as an English player. Him and Ian Calvert will definitely be competing with our left hand side. Again, he's an inverted winger. Calvert is a winger. Gives us two different options. And at least initially this guy will be my starter. Alez Dvorak. We signed from Slavia Prague for 14 million. He's not quite going to be made a level, but he is certainly getting there. Czech Republic International, seven caps already at 19 years old. He is going to be our centre-back supreme. And I'm hoping, I'm just hoping above hope that we can keep him fit and he can be a mainstay in our side. He's, oh, he's, he's beautiful. I love him. There is one catch with him though. He is slightly, oh, well, he's not listed here. He was listed on his scout report as slightly injury prone, not heavily. Uh, and I did have a look through his injury history and it's not major. But um, yeah, we might have fitness issues with this lad. But he was too good to turn down. The other centre-back options were nowhere near his sort of quality. And uh, I, just, I just couldn't resist. I had to bring him in. 
and finally takes us to Ikaro, who will be our deep lying playmaker in the defensive midfield role for the season. 17.75 million pound release clause. Look at him. He's a wonder kid. Uh, he's going to be fantastic. I just know it. 19 million pounds is worth already and stupidly well rounded. Technically, he's beautiful. He's technique 17, passing 16, first touch 15. Ideal for that deep line playmaker role which he would be playing. He's got the tackle in the 13, the position in the 13 as well to go along with these other impressive attributes. The only area of concern in terms of his overall game is probably his physicals. But as a deep line playmaker, physicals aren't that relevant and aren't that important. So, yeah, I like him a lot. And I think we've done well this, this summer. So there are all the signings. And this is how our first 11 should look. Um, with everybody fit. The only surviving players in our starting round are Luke Daly, who we rejected a £35 million bid for from West Brom. Uh, and we'll also have Stanko and Terence Platt, who will also be starting. Terence Platt as the right winger, Samuel Stanko as the attack and midfielder. They, them are the only survivors in the first 11. Of course, we've still got the likes of Alexi and stuff, and Dulce, who we can bring in off the bench, um, who will be fighting for first team spots. But at least initially, this is our best 11. So before we go any further, let me know down in the comments. How do you think we're going to do? Are we going to beat Barnsley? Are we going to even get close to Birmingham? Let me know. I'm not too sure myself. Before we get into today's first game, it's the opening day against West Brom. I'm going to quickly check what Barnsley and Birmingham have done. Have they sold any of my players? Let's have a quick glance at this. They spent 76. Um, no, they didn't sell any of mine. Emil Smith-Rowe coming in from Mönchengladbach. It's probably why the, the sign Mezai in, so it's Barnsley's fault. But no, nothing really of interest there. Barnsley, uh, did I even show you the Premier League, how it finished? I think Barnsley finished above Birmingham in the end. Yeah, Barnsley finished 11th, Birmingham finished 12th. Let's have a look and see what Birmingham have done um, in their transfer. They've sold Yak up. I mean, he's one of the best goalkeepers on the game. Why have you done that? Oh, and not even for a great fee either. 41.5 could rise to 46. Disappointing. So Andre Anderson, of course, who was one of ours for £15 million. And Alexander Diaz for 13 and a half. Felix Paslak. I would have been interested in Felix if I knew he was for sale. Um, but other than that, it looks like everybody else. They've spent 180 Birmingham City. Marcus Leonardo for... Oh my dears. £75 million on this man. Well, if you've got the money, you might as well spend it. Sam Brown, a central midfielder. I was already looking at him for loan. Chris Turner, um, Fabio Roberto. Ugh, I wish I'd spotted this man before Birmingham got in there. Excellent signing at 19.75 million. I'm happy. Birmingham have done some fantastic business this summer, apart from selling Jakob. But anyway, that's enough of our former clubs. Let's get into the West Brom game, away from home, and see how our boys come, uh, do in their very first game in the Premier League. So West Brom are the opposition. Uh, they weren't newly promoted, were they? What has happened to West Brom? So this is their third season consecutively in the Premier League. They finished eighth last season. So a good top half Premier League side to test our boys out. Let's see how they get on. If they get beat, they get beat. I'm hoping for a draw. First highlight of the game. Samuel Stanko pinches the ball and drives down this right hand side. Is he whipping it in? He is. It comes to Daly on the left hand side. We've got loads of men in the box as well. Platt is one of them. He hits the post. Ah, oh, 10 minutes in, we should be 1-0 up. Another highlight now, Stankovic pinches the ball and gets a clear, but unfortunately, West Brom do well to retain possession. Vina comes down this left-hand side, dances past uh, Terence Platt. Adam Luckman takes over. Stankovic gives away a penalty 12 minutes in. That's not something we need in the Premier League, Stankovic. You need to learn quickly um, to avoid that sort of situation again. Adley is the man who steps up. He hits the post. He just stands there. We've got away with it. Champion. Whoa. Bit of an exciting start of the game. 17 minutes in, we now have another highlight and we are in possession. Ikaro plays at the Stankovic on the right-hand side. You awesome, mate. He tries to find Millard, uh, Damien, in the centre. He finds him this time. Ah, oh, Damien. Ikaro with the ball. Corner, whips it in. Heffen and Holland. Come on, get the goal. And that is going to be it for the first half. A very impressive first half. Obviously, that penalty miss was massively, massively lucky, but... I'm happy with how the boys have been performing. I'm absolutely delighted. 55 minutes gone. The first highlight of the second half. It's Luke Daly getting dispossessed on the left-hand side. Thankfully, Akaro is there to mop it up. 
Stank or Heffern and Holland picks up the body, drives into the box. Heffern and Holland. Oh, good save by Danny. The highlight does continue though. Pitra picks up the ball. Damien's made an excellent run. Please finish this. Damien Mallard. Come on, my son. His first goal of the season. This man is the potentially the man who could lead us to glory. Excellent player by Heffern and Holland to find this the certain pass. If you see Damien's movement here, this massive barrel of space here. Was he offside? It looked like he was. <laughs> no no uh, flag from the assistant. Great finish. And 30 minutes to go. Can we hang on? Terence hasn't had the greatest game on that right hand side. We're going to get him off of Rabek. Um, Stankovic, you're doing fine mate. I'm not worried about you. Heffern and Holland's going to stay on as well as Ian Calvert is injured and unavailable for today's match. Another highlight. Rabek is the man to take it. It's caught, oh, caught by Danny. Oh my dears. Wait until you see this replay when they score. Thankfully, Adamia, oh, he saves it twice. That was ridiculous, by the way. That keeper just booted it up. Our defence completely fell asleep and the striker was in behind. 20 minutes to go. Goal kick for us. Adamia is the man who is, of course, taking it. Stanko heads it down for Damien. Come on, Damien. Damien Mallard. What an absolute joy this man is going to be to watch for the next season. Absolutely unbelievable. 2-0 up away from home against a very... Very good Premier League side. Finished 8th last season, might I remind you. And Damien Mallard is making them look absolutely stupid. What a finish. 2-0. Oh, Final 5 minutes of the game. We'll look to make some changes. Samuel Stanko can come off. We're going to put Damien Mallard in the attacking midfield role. And bring on Alexi up front. Gonzalo Negro can come on at right back as well for Stankovic. And there is full time. West Brom nil. Damien too. <laughs> now, I'm not going to get carried away by that result, but we're going to win the league. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll have a look for our next episode then. Shall we take on the Titans or shall we take on Barnsley? Arsenal Barnsley, I think it seems good to me. So that will be the next episode then, lads. Arsenal and Barnsley will have played about five or six games in the Premier League then. And we'll see whereabouts we're lining. Obviously, that first game. It's always a bit of a coin flip, your first game in the Premier League, regardless of who you're playing. So we can't read too much into that win, but we can certainly enjoy it. Anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, as I said, leave a like, get yourself subscribed. And until next time, take it easy.